In this lesson, we're going to talk about the metadata API that you can use in the app router to add metadata tags to your Next.js app. Let's dive in. So as I mentioned, the new metadata API can be used to define metadata tags like meta tags, links, and descriptions, uh, and put them inside your HTML head element. This is for improved SEO and also web shareability. There are mainly two ways that you can add or use this metadata API. First way or pattern is config-based metadata, whereby you would export static objects or use this generate metadata function to generate this metadata object uh, dynamically. The second way is file-based metadata, whereby you would add static or dynamically generated special files inside of your uh, code base or route segments to create metadata tags for your site. Now in this lesson, we're going to cover config-based metadata, but if you have a specific use case where you want to use the file-based metadata, you can use the documentation and learn more about it there. But let's start from the static metadata. This is for pages that don't have any dynamic segment or dynamic parameters. To define static metadata, you can export a metadata object from your pages and layouts. So you would just export a metadata constant or object and you would pass in the desired metadata tags. We're going to explain or dive into the API reference to see what fields are available. But for now, if you don't have any dynamic parameters or any content or value that needs to be dynamically generated, you can just export a static object from your page or layout um, and add the metadata to your code. We're going to see this in action. We're going to jump to the code and actually add this to our project. But for now, let's just go in and see how we will go about adding dynamic metadata. Now for dynamic metadata, that's when your values inside your metadata object actually requires or depends on some dynamic values. For example, you want to read the params object from the route segment. Maybe this is for a specific blog post and you want to generate metadata based on that specific blog post. You would export an asynchronous function called generate metadata from your page. Uh, and then you're going to return an object which is going to merge to all the other metadata objects that was created from the parent element up until that point. Now you also actually have access to the parent metadata object. So this generate metadata function receives two parameters. The first one is this object, which is the props object. It contains the parameters object and the search params. These two are the same thing that's passed to your page component. Uh, it has the params object is the route segments and the search params is the current URL search parameters. And the second property or argument passed to this generate metadata function is a promise that will resolve into parents metadata object. So for example, optionally, you can just await this parent, get a specific uh, field or value from that metadata object and then merge into it or replace it or expand it and whatnot. Now down here, a couple of notes. Um, again, this function accepts two parameters. We explained this. The only thing wanna, I wanna add here is that this search parameters, it's only accessible in your page component. Now, this is not specific to this generate metadata function. Generally speaking, uh, if you remember, your page components or server components receive the params object and also the search params object. That's the query strings in your URL. This search param, params object is only passed into the page component because the layout uh, is shared between couple of pages and it doesn't really make sense if this search parameters is also sent to the layout um, because layout is shared between a couple of different pages so your page component only receives uh, this search params object so if you're exporting a metadata object that requires access to this search parameters instead of exporting this generate metadata from a layout you have to export it from a page because remember you can export this from either a page or a layout uh, the parent, the second parameter or argument passed to the function, I, we discussed that this is uh, just the parent uh, metadata object. Now, note, metadata object or generate metadata function can only be used in server components. So these are not supported in your client components. 
Um, you can turn a page or a layout into a co client component, but you cannot use metadata objects if your pages or layouts are turned into client components. It's not a good idea to turn your pages and layouts into client components. Anyways, the pattern was to just abstract the logic or interactivity needed into a specific client component rather than turning the whole page into a client component. But if they are client components, you can't use the metadata object or the generate metadata function. Also, you cannot export both of them together. So it has to either be the metadata object or the generate metadata function for your dynamic segments. And two more side notes here. Uh, when this actually goes back to the caching lesson, we mentioned that uh, the response for your fetch requests are automatically deduplicated. So if you're calling the same function to fetch the same data, let's say for your page, we're going to see this in our project. We're going to get a specific post by this log inside of our page component. We are also calling uh, this function in generate metadata to actually get some front matter and uh, create metadata object. Uh, so if you're calling uh, these requests multiple times, uh, they're going to be cached, they're going to be duplicated, or deduplicated, so therefore uh, they're not called twice during one render pass. Now, when the fetch API, we also learned, when the fetch API is not used or is not available, which is our case, we're not using fetch, we're actually reading these files from our uh, FS module, so they're like living inside of our code project. For when the fetch API, or you're not using the fetch API, we're going to use the cache function from React. We also see this when we created the guest book page where we were creating uh, messages or entries in our MongoDB, we used the cache function from React to actually uh, wrap around uh, the function that was actually using our database client to fetch uh, or to query our database. It wasn't using the fetch API, so therefore we had to manually use the cache function. We're going to also implement this together uh, as a refresher. Now, last thing is that uh, when Next.js is streaming the response uh, to the user, to the client, to the browser, it, it waits until uh, the fetching, the data fetching inside the generate metadata function is completed. So therefore, the first part of this chunk or streamed response includes the head tag. Um, so this is the first thing Next.js awaits for completion before streaming your response. Now, as I mentioned, to get a list of all the available fields you can set on your metadata objects, you can go to the documentation uh, for the API reference. So uh, on the right-hand side, as you can see, there are different uh, fields you can pass in, uh, things like title, description, basic fields, uh, open graph descriptions, uh, for example, all the, uh, all the available fields that you can pass in and what they would be actually uh, translated to inside of your head element. Let's now jump into the code and apply some of the stuff we've learned here. Now, as you can see here, this metadata object was exported from our root layout out of the box when we installed our Next.js application. Here, we have some title and description, which in turn is going to translate to title tag and description into our head component. So let me just make this a bit smaller. As you can see here inside of our head tag, we should have this meta description and also this title tag. I've changed this to just reflect that this is a portfolio site created by me. And as you can see up top, it's a bit small, but up top on the browser, you can see this title there. Well, this is an example of a static page and a static metadata object. All you need to do is to export a constant called metadata, set it into an object and pass in whatever field that you want to set inside of your head element. Now, furthermore, if we wanted to actually also include metadata tag for our blog posts, if you remember, we had different blog posts. And if I go to this Learn Next.js 13, where I'm actually using inside of my app, this posts, this dynamic slog component responsible for rendering different blog posts over here. We added image in the previous uh, lessons. Now, what we want to do to this page, let me just bring this closer. From a high level, what we were doing was we had a page component responsible for rendering this page. It was calling the get post by slug. This was a function we created in our library. 
that was just reading uh, the content of our file system and parsing our MDX or Markdown out of it and spitting out something that actually React can render. Um, so we were calling that function over here. We also exported generate static params, which was a function we could export from our dynamic segments to instruct Next.js what values for these dynamic segments we actually want to statically generate at build time. Uh, so this is also getting all of our posts by reading the content of our uh, FS module. Using the FS module, it's reading the content of the code or uh, markdown files that we provided here inside of this content. And it's going to spit out some metadata so we can actually provide these logs for which we want to gener uh, statically generate pages. Now, as you can see here, I'm exporting another function from this page called generate metadata. And this is the function we just learned to create metadata objects for pages that use dynamic data. We are receiving the params object. This is the same params object we are receiving in the page component, as you can see down here. I'm getting this slug out of it. And I'm calling the same get post by slug function we just looked at to get some front matter. And I'm returning this object that's going to have a title set to frontmatter.title and to the author. Now, going back to the content, just as a refresher, our content, uh, if you remember, had this front matter up top. We were able to parse this out and return them as an object that has key value pairs set to these keys. So I have a title, I have an author. You can have more stuff over here. You can have different images, dates and stuff and what, whatnot, and use that to dynamically generate your metadata. So that's what we're doing over here. And I just uh, conditionally sh that showed this here that you can actually use this parent evaded. So it's the same thing from the docs. I'm not using anything from the parent component. So you can just comment this out uh, for now. All we're doing is to get this log, fetch that slug, get the front matter, show the title and the author for our metadata object. Now, if I refresh the page, as you can see up top, it says learn Next.js 13 by Hamid Bahram. So it's using this title and merging it into the current metadata object that we had, which means that if I open up uh, the elements here, you can see inside of our head, our title now says learn Next.js, but we also have this description tag added from our root layout, which was created using Next.js. So what I'm trying to say here is that whatever we're returning over here actually merges to whatever metadata object or uh, key value pairs or values you have created in the parent component. So it's using the description from the parent, from the root layout, and it's just replacing uh, the title tag. Now, as I mentioned, if you were using the fetch API inside of the generate metadata, generate static params and the page component, React would have automatically deduplicate this request so we are not actually refetching or sending multiple requests for the same resource. But we are not using the fetch API here. We're just reading the content of our file system, which requires us to manually use the cache function from React to be able to deduplicate our requests because we're calling this get post by slug inside of this generate metadata function. We are also calling it on the page as well. So we don't want to do this parsing of the content in our file system twice. We just want to do it once and reuse that same value. So we would go down to where we actually uh, define this get post by slug function. We created a library again as a refresher for our posts where we included some functions that helps us work with our posts or uh, markdown files inside of our file system. Now, all I need to do here is similar to what we did in the previous modules uh, for the guest book, whereby we would just wrap this function with cache function from React. So I'm going to go up top here and I'm going to actually import this cache function from React. And now if I save this file with this cache function, I don't have to worry about calling this get post by slug function twice inside my page component and generate metadata. The first time is going to be called with this generate metadata. 
the result is going to be uh, stored in a temporary cache by React and then it's going to be reused for this uh, this time that we're calling it inside of our page component. That's wrap for this lesson, folks. We talked about the new metadata API that you can use inside the app router to generate metadata tags for your Next.js application. We talked about the config-based pattern and the file-based pattern. The config-based pattern was to export static metadata objects from your pages or layouts or use the generate metadata function to dynamically generate this metadata object. We also explained that the file-based version uses a special files by either statically exporting those special files or including those special files inside of your route segments or dynamically generating those special files. Now in the next lesson, we're going to dive into more advanced routing concepts, specifically the route handlers, which are the API endpoints inside the app router, and after that, we're going to talk about middleware. So see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.